Late last month, Japan's government approved a new defense strategy, which includes historic policy changes and a boost in military spending. Yuki Tatsumi is a senior fellow and director of the Japan program at the Stimson Center. Yuki, welcome to the program. Thanks. So what prompted Japan to review and update its defense strategy? I think the biggest uh, driver of this is a uh, quickly rising threat that uh, Japan feels from China. Um, it already has uh, tripled um, its uh, defense spending compared to what Japan had been spending previously. And they really felt the need to uh, really modernize uh, its defense, uh, defense capability. And that really had uh, prompted to revise the uh, defense strategy as, uh, as the country was uh, actually going through a more thorough revision of its own more broader national security strategy, which was also released together. What specific lessons did Japan take from Russia's invasion of Ukraine? Um, so that uh, it could happen, and they, uh, Japan's uh, defense uh, planners are watching uh, Russian tactics uh, very, very carefully, closely, especially the uh, information warfare um, type of um, um, emerging technology that it uses, and they basically compare that with uh, what China could do, and basically in some areas China has a far more advanced capability, so that really um, up there a uh, sense of urgency. When you say it could happen, they're not thinking China could invade Japan. No, China, um, that, that, that would not happen. That's not what they're thinking. But there's, there's the uh, little island called uh, Taiwan, which is uh, strategically very, very important for Japan. And uh, if, uh, because of the proximity of uh, Taiwan from a Japanese territory, if China had some aggressive intentions and did try to do anything closer, to what Russia did to Ukraine, um, it quickly uh, spills over to uh, Japan's own territory. And let's not forget, uh, Japan does host a sizable U.S. forces in its own soil. And many of that forces will be deployed to uh, come to a Taiwan, uh, help Taiwan def defending itself. What are the specific weapons and capabilities that Japan is investing in as part of this new defense strategy? Uh, first of all, it is really doubling down on its um, uh, ballistic missile defense uh, capabilities. But then what's new in this, this defense strategy is for the first time in its uh, post-war history, Japan basically declared that it will um, go after to acquire the uh, strike capability. Now, they still uh, are placed in the context of uh, we only use it to defend ourselves and our allies, but it, it, is, a, it is a watershed moment for uh, Japanese defense planners. That's what I was going to ask you. Is this solely defensive, or is there a provision for a preemptive strike? There is a case um, that, are um, that are actually uh, acknowledged as the uh, can be the trigger of this uh, capability without solely on the defensive purposes which is more of a broader self-defense purposes. But let's say uh, if they detect either China or North Korea, because North Korea remains to be a Japan's a very urgent threat too, they have uh, actionable intelligence that uh, either of those places are posing to um, launch a missile, and it is very likely to land on Japanese soil, where Japan does do nothing, and wait for them to boost, and then try to, and hope for the best for the missile defense works. So that is the one specific scenario that I could think of, that, that this new, t new, uh, new uh, capability could be used. Will Japan also be enlarging their military personnel forces, or is this just about weapons? Um, it is uh, partly about weapons, but then it is also, also about the, uh, modernizing the uh, defense workforce. Uh, Japan, as we all of us, many of us know, is a hyper-aging society. So uh, even though uh, Japan would love to increase its personnel, in terms of the demographics, it's not exactly a feasible option. So how to integrate the uh, new technology so that it didn't have have to rely solely on the uh, body counts, to put, put it primitively, is, uh, is a very, one of the key elements of the new defense strategy. And I know that the, the U.S. welcomes these changes. Has there been any reaction from China or from North Korea? Um, China, of course, uh, always reacts to whatever Japan tries to do. And uh, North Korea, same way. Um, they're always uh, rhetorically, uh, always uh, try to uh, provoke the uh, memory of uh, Japan way, way back in 1930s. But, um, but I think uh, reaction from Washington really tells that you know, Japan is in a very different place now. China is also known to use economic coercion. How does 
Japan react to that? How do they defend against something like that? So one of the uh, one of the key developments that was not exactly reported um, all that much here is that Japan finally uh, turned its focus on what the Biden administration called economic security, and that's all about protecting uh, critical technologies um, and making sure that the all these uh, all, all these uh, technologies that. Uh, contribute to economic growth will, will not be used for uh, mal malicious purposes and uh, that um, wholesale uh, legislation for the first time was enacted in diet uh, Japanese diet uh, last fall and that was the uh, precedent that was like a prelude to this uh, new national security strategy which uh, dictates the uh, defense strategy how significant is the boost in Japan's defense spending and what impact do you think it will have on the security and uh, the deterrence in the Indo-Pacific? I think uh, Japan upping its uh, defense uh, defense budget. Uh, they say they aim to do this, uh, basically double it over the next five years. Um, have a tremendous impact on it. Uh, first of all, I think it will um, help uh, U.S. Um, U.S. Uh, coming up with the uh, more of a joint integrated allied uh, de deterrence cap uh, defense strategy in the Indo-Pacific region. And Japan can also um, support a United States effort to um, reach out to uh, its uh, regional partners and allies. Um, Australia is the first one that, that comes to my mind. India, Southeast Asia. And even uh, Japan is really for now investing its relationship with some of the key NATO allies, like France and Germany, that also ha does have uh, interest in uh, stability in, the, in, that, in that region. Yuki, thanks so much for being on the program. Nice to talk to you. Very nice to talk to you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.